So now, uh, after all the timeline and those great news, um, let me give you some figures. So, as you could see on the timeline, Ruby is uh, more than five years old, born in August 2003. We've got many committers, but mainly around 10 plus active committers. And uh, we've even got four dedicated dedicated committers on the great on the um, on the Eclipse plugin, and we've got the lead of the Eclipse plugin just there. Scott Hickey is going to give a, to give a nice uh, session on the big success story of uh, Ruby usage in a mission critical application. It's uh, really a session you shouldn't miss. Um, after the release of Ruby 1.0, um, I, I did some some statistics, and just in the in the following weeks, we, we had like 11k downloads just in yeah in, in, in the first month. Never since we we've got several k's of downloads each month. Uh, our mailing lists are pretty buzzy. We've got over 1,000 subscribers to um, to our different mailing lists the user list, the developer list, the JSR list, um, and some internal uh, developer lists. And as you may probably know, Groovy and Grails are hosted at uh, Code House, an open source community. And uh, if you look at the, the traffic on the mailing list at Code House through, um, you know, Nubble, the nice, the nice uh, mailing list interface you can browse from the web, they've got some, some nice uh, um, rankings of the most successful list and the first two lists at Codehouse, despite all the great projects they are, uh, at Codehouse uh, we've got the highest traffic mailing list of all. And um, another figure I quite like, um, back in 2005, at the first um, Java one where we had some Ruby presents, um, the first year we had three sessions about Ruby. Well, not bad which was quite young. Then, um, in 2006, we had six sessions. Five sessions on Ruby, I believe, and one session on Grails. Not bad. We doubled the figure. Okay. And then, this year, we've, we've got 13 sessions about Ruby and Grails. Quite amazing. I'm not sure we'll manage to get, like, 26 sessions next year, but <laughs> we'll see. The bets are, are open. Um, and um, usually at most major conferences, there are always some grooving great stocks, anyway, not just channel. I'll show you a few covers of um, the Groovy books, uh, which are already there, um, but there are more in, in the pipeline. For instance, there's Scott Davies, who's just over the here. <laughs> and uh, it's the guy who's running the website badgroovy.com and is currently writing a Groovy Recipes book, uh, which should be released soon. <laughs> <laughs> soon. Real soon now. Real soon now. <laughs> and well, there's, um, there's already quite a, a lot of books already on the topic. I, I'm just showing the Groovy books, I'm not showing the great books. And uh, there's the famous Groovy in Action, which was published um, around uh, the release of uh, Groovy 1.0. It's even been translated in German. Um, I think the German community, Groovy community, is quite big. There are quite a few uh, German books there. Uh, there's mm, this nice little book by, called Groovy Programming with a really groovy cover back uh, at the bottom left there. And uh, it's a book made by, by some uh, Scottish teachers who are teaching uh, <coughs> Groovy courses to their students. So it's nice to know that, you know, when you were a student, uh, you used to learn some crazy languages uh, like OCaml, Prolog, uh, Haskell, whatever. And now students learn Groovy. No, you're kidding. <laughs> and uh, I also mentioned uh, scripting Java. There's, uh, there are a couple of big chapters on, on, on Groovy, so that's a nice feel on this book as well, which is quite Groovy too. And it's funny, they, they chose, the, they chose the, the orange color, like uh, the G21 logo. Did you notice that? <laughs> okay, and um, uh, perhaps you know it, um, the, the JAX conference, uh, it's probably the biggest um, conference, Java and IT conference uh, in Germany. 
and um, they are every year they are running um, a content contest. Sorry, and they are um, giving some some innovation awards um, to project projects which are um, innovative and creative. And they, there were forty proposals. There's a, a jury who selected uh, some ten nominees, and. Uh, it was Dear Clinic who was presenting uh, the Groovy project, and you can see him on the pictures there. And uh, guess who won? Well, the Groovy project. And there's even a, a donation of uh, 10,000 euros that uh, we received uh, through this award. And just to give you um, a little background on the kind of past winners of this award, la the, the, the previous year, uh, that was the spring, f the, the spring framework that won. So, if you uh, if you're just after the the next year after spring, um, it's groovy. Yeah, you know you put spring and groovy on the same level of innovation, creativity. It's, it's quite a pleasure, and I'm pretty proud of having received this prize. A few words about the groovy cloud. You see a nice list of names here, of projects, of companies. All these uh, names are somewhat related to Groovy because either um, they integrate uh, Groovy directly um, inside those products or projects, and uh, or they, uh, they they have some some plugins uh, contributed by the community or fully supported plugins. Um, I highlighted a few ones, uh, well, like Grails or Jebusim, um, TestNG, Spring and its nice Groovy integration, Mule or uh, IntelliJ IDEA for its nice Groovy and Grails plugin, can web test, you can write you know, your test scenarios uh, in Groovy. And uh, you can notice some, some big names like Oracle. Uh, they are using Groovy in a, in a few uh, commercial products already. And I'm sure I've forgotten many. Uh, it's already a nice list, but I'm sure there are others. So that's the Groovy Clown, the Groovy ecosystem. <coughs> 